Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to make this 3D printable phone stand with a live and working print in place hinge. This tutorial is perfect if you want to learn how to get started creating simple print in place hinges for toolboxes, storage crates, or that requires any sort of design that prints in place. So to get started, let's go ahead and open up Fusion 360 and get right into it. Okay, so to get started with this tutorial, first thing we need to do here is hover over to create new component. And let's go ahead and name this component to foldable phone mount and press OK. Next, let's go ahead and right click on the component and then toggle on unground from parent. That way we can actually use as built joints later on in the video, which I'll explain once we get to that part. The next thing we need to do here is click on create new sketch, then selecting the front plane here. And what we want to do is to create a center rectangle, clicking on create rectangle, then clicking on center rectangle. From the origin, we're gonna to wanna to drag this out. We're gonna set this to around 15 millimeters and then set the distance here to around 65 millimeters and press okay. From here, let's go ahead and click on finish sketch. The next thing we wanna do here is to extrude this profile. Selecting that profile and then pressing E on our keyboard, we can go ahead and extrude this profile. The next thing we wanna do here is set the direction to symmetric. By selecting symmetric, it's gonna allow us to select the profile and extrude it to one side while also having the other side extrude in the same direction or with the same value, with the same distance value. Once that's done, press okay. Next, let's hover over to our components menu on the left-hand side, toggle on this one here, then toggle on sketches, and then turn off sketch one as we'll no, no longer need it. The next thing we need to do here is to create a sketch then selecting the front face here. And now what we need to do here is to create a total of three lines, pressing L on our keyboard or selecting the line feature on the top left-hand side. And what I want you to do is to select any point along this square edge here. Now, don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but all we want to do is just draw out one single line, then to the right, and then going back up. And what we've done is basically create the cutout for our phone to sit in. The next thing I want to do here is to make sure that these two lines are parallel. So hovering over to the constraints menu on the top middle section of Fusion, then selecting parallel, and then making sure we select these two lines here. And let me just go back because they seem to switch. Selecting these two lines, and now these two are parallel. Let's also set the dimensions for these two lines by pressing D on our keyboard, then selecting this line and this line. I'm going to set the value here to around 12 millimeters. Next, I'm also gonna set this value here. And you can see right now, it's currently at a degree. So the reason that is, is because right now, this is actually not parallel to this line, which is okay. But what we want to do is that we wanna make sure that this is 90 degrees here to this. So we can actually use the perpendicular constraints on the top middle section here, selecting the line, and then the line here. And now this is flushed at 90 degrees here repeat the process for the left hand side and as you can see it's over constrained meaning that's already 90 degrees which is perfect then what we can do here is set the value between these two lines and what we're really looking for is to set the value so let's just say around 25 30 30 degrees so that means we have a angle of 30 degrees for our phone to slide in here next what we want to do here is to select this profile here pressing e on our keyboard then setting the extent type to two object. The reason why we're doing this is because this allows us to select the opposite side, which then cuts into our design. And then by pressing okay, what this allows us to do is basically create the cutout from here to the opposite side. And in any case, if we were to ever to change the dimensions of this, for example, if I wanted to change this to let's just say 20 for whatever reason, this will also propagate with the new uh, new settings that we've already created because it's already set to two object. From here, let's go ahead and finish up the design by creating a cutout here. This is more so for a design or some sort of pattern for our product, but let's go ahead and add that there. Let's click on sketch two by double clicking on sketch two, then creating a line once again, and let's go ahead and create the line going up to the right and going down and then to the left. Once that's done, let's go ahead and make sure every single line here is parallel to each other, selecting this line here, then the line at the bottom, then the line at the right, and this one's gonna stay to this one here. 
Let's also set to some dimensions by pressing D on our keyboard, selecting this line to this line. I'm gonna set this to around 2.5. I'm also gonna repeat the exact same process for the bottom, and I'm gonna set this to 2.5 as well. From here, I'm gonna set the distance between this line on the left or on the right, as well as towards the end, and set this to around six, and repeat the exact same process between these two parallel lines here. Once that's done, finish sketch. Then what we can do here is double click on the last feature we just added with Infusion. By double clicking on that, then by holding Command if you're on Mac or Control if you're on Windows, selecting this newly created profile, setting the operation to cut on the right hand side, and press OK. And what we've done is essentially created a new feature with Infusion without having to manually create a new one within our timeline. With that done, let's go ahead and add some chamfers to this to kind of make this a little bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing. Pressing S on our keyboard, typing in chamfer, then selecting the edges all around our design here. And I'm select the bottom one there. And chamfer this in, let's just say around two millimeters looks good to me. I'm also gonna add chamfers here on the right hand side. And there you go, pressing enter. And now we have our 3D printable phone mount fully created within Fusion 360. Now, the next thing I wanna do here is to create a cutout for our hinge. So, so far, this is the easy part. The part that gets a little bit intimidating is actually creating the hinge. So don't worry, I'm gonna make sure to walk through every single step in detail. So make sure to follow along as we go through with this. So currently right now, our design is actually made up into one whole piece. But what we're actually gonna do is split this piece into two different parts and then split that on later on. So for example, instead of splitting it right now and then creating the hinge, what we're actually gonna do is create the hinge first and then split it. So to do that, let's hover over to create sketch, then selecting the top face. And what I wanna do now is to create the sketch for our hinge. So to do this, what I want you to do is to select the center diameter circle. By selecting that circle, I want to go ahead and draw a circle right in the center, right where our midpoint is, but just dragging this out. I'm just gonna match this to the length of our design. So if the length of our design is around 10 millimeters in thickness, and the way you can check is by clicking on the inspect icon here or the measure icon, then selecting these two edges, you can see that the distance here is 10 millimeters, which also means my circle here or my hinge is also gonna be 10 millimeters as well. Let's go ahead and close this off by pressing L on our keyboard, then selecting the circle, going to the left, once again at the bottom, going to the left. Now, so far, this is fairly simple. So don't worry if you know if you might have lost you, just go ahead and skip back or go back around 10 seconds. The next thing we need to do here is to create another circle. So what we're gonna do is create a center diameter circle from the center once again, and let's go ahead and set this out. Now, it doesn't matter how far you set this out because we're gonna go ahead and dimension this. Pressing D on your keyboard, selecting these two circles here. I'm gonna drag this out all the way over here so that way we can kind of see what we're doing. I'm gonna set the thickness of this wall here to around 1.2 millimeters. Next, I wanna create one more circle from the center, dragging this out. Then I'm gonna select D on my keyboard once again, selecting this line and this line here, or these two circles. And I'm gonna set this to around 0.24 millimeters. Now to briefly explain what this looks like, this is basically the thickness, the outer wall, these two sketches here, or these two profiles, this is basically the outer wall of our design. This gap in between here, this super tiny gap, this 0.24 millimeters, that is the amount of clearance we're leaving behind where the pin is gonna sit inside in between the spacing for the outer walls that holds our pin in place. That white part here that is not highlighted, that is the amount of clearance we're using to print this design. With that done, let's go ahead and finish this up by pressing L on our keyboard, selecting the line in the middle and dragging this out to the midpoint. With that done, let's go ahead and click on finish sketch. And now we have the general sketch for our hinge. Now don't worry, we're gonna move on to the next step here, which is actually splitting these two bodies. To do that, pressing S, type in split. We're gonna select the split body icon within Fusion. From here, what we wanna do is to select the body within our canvas, then select the splitting tools. 
The splitting tools is actually going to be what we use for the origin since we directly drew within the origin here. We're going to want to select the mid plane here or more specifically the origin. You can kind of see it highlighted when you hover over it or you can toggle on the origin icon here for it to show up once again. As you can see, what I want to do is select the plane here that sits right here in the front. By selecting that, that's going to cut into our design, create a cutout and press OK. Now, if you hover over to the left hand side, you can see there's body one, which is the front face here, and then body two. From here, let's go ahead and toggle on body one. Let's go ahead and name this to left and name this to right. The next thing I'm going to do is also create these two bodies into different components. By right clicking on left, click on create components from bodies, and right clicking on right, click on create components from bodies. What this essentially does is basically create a new timeline within Fusion. This new timeline is only going to reflect within this design here, which we've created. In addition, this allows us to separate the pieces moving on from here on out. Additionally, I also want to make sure we remove this anchor icon because we're also going to use as build joints by right clicking on this, clicking on unground from parent. With that done, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step here is to create the working hinge for our design. So what I'm going to do now is hover over to the right one because we're going to start with the right one first. Then selecting these top profile here and we're going to select these top two profiles. This is going to be the outer edge that actually holds our pin in place. By pressing E on our keyboard, we can go ahead and drag this down to around negative two millimeters. What we've essentially done is to create the hole or the cutout for our working hinge. As you can kind of see, we've selected these two profiles. This is excluding the clearance and the pin in the center and this piece on the left hand side. Once that's done, press OK. Next, what I want to do is to mirror this to the opposite side. Pressing S, type in mirror. Then we're going to select the last feature within our timeline, then selecting the mirror plane and selecting the bottom plane here. You can kind of see it. And in case if you don't see it, you can go ahead and turn on your origin here on the components menu on the left hand side, selecting the bottom. And now it's mirrored onto the bottom. Once that's done, press OK. Next, let's hover over to the left, toggle on left. Then now what we want to do here is to create the pin for our design. Now to do that, we actually need to create the center piece for our design first. So to do that, let's hover over to our top piece, select this profile here, this piece here, and then these two pieces here, or these, all these profiles here, essentially. Next, what we want to do here is position this profile we just created in between the center here. So if our cutout reaches down to around two millimeters, we need to create some clearance and there's more specifically some amount of spacing and gap in between our piece or the piece that's going to hold our pin versus the piece that's going to have our pin sitting in the middle. Pressing E on our keyboard, let's go ahead and drag this down. And what I'm doing here, I'm going to set the distance here or by selecting this profile here, you can see this is around negative 13 millimeters. So I'm actually going to type in negative 12.6 which gives us a clearance of around 0.4 millimeters. In addition, I'm also gonna set the offset here. So if we set this to around negative two going down, it's gonna be negative 2.4. It's going back up once again. You can see we actually shifted it with our offset. Once again, if it's negative 10.6, it's gonna be negative 10.2. Press okay. Now what we've done is created the basic sort of hinge for our design. Now these two pieces aren't connected yet. Now in order to connect these, we need to finish this up by selecting the last profile in the center, pressing E on our keyboard. Then let's go ahead and set the extent type to two object, selecting the bottom side and make sure the operation is set to join. Press OK. Now that is completed, let's go ahead and toggle on foldable phone mount one, which is the top level component here. We can also turn off our sketch three. And now we have our live and working 3D printable phone stand with a live hinge that gets ready to be 3D printed and printed in place. To finish this up, let's go ahead and toggle off the origin so that way we can kind of see this more clearly. And now what we want to do here is add as built joints. As built joints allows us to create moving parts or mechanisms within Fusion and kind of get a better view as to what we're working with. So to do that, let's press S on our keyboard, type in as built joint. Then selecting the right side, then the left, 
and then make sure to selecting the center here of our pin. And as you can see, Fusion 360 has created a simple animation of our design within our canvas. Pressing enter on a keyboard. And now with this newly created flag, you can double click on this. And now you can rotate this design in any way you want. Now, as you can see, this doesn't completely fold all the way out more than negative 280 degrees, but it does fold completely in, which is what we're looking for with this design. With that done, we also need to create some sort of gap in between these two pieces. And the reason why is because if we were to 3D print this, this would actually stick together. And since Fusion 360 doesn't create some sort of clearance for us, and nor will Bamboo Studio do that, we need to actually manually do this ourselves. To do this, you can actually select this front face here, right click, press pull, and type in negative 0.4. Set the distance here to negative 0.4 and press OK. Now we've created some sort of clearance in between these two parts here within Fusion. And the last thing we need to do here is to export this to our slicer. To do that, let's go ahead and move the arrow or the flag icon here around 90 degrees out or 180 degrees out, excuse me. Pressing enter, then clicking on or right clicking on the top level component, save as mesh. And what we wanna do here is export this to our slicer. Okay, so here is our design ready to be 3D printed within Bamboo Studio. So here I have our design fully rotated on its front face here, allowing it to print with the hinge kind of laying on its side. If we were to go ahead and click on slice plate, you can see our design has all the pieces fully aligned, not allowing our slicer or our filament to kind of adhere to each other when we're printing it. Now, the cool thing about 3D printing is that your slicer is pretty smart to know when these sorts of things are happening. Now, as you can see, as we're actually printing this upward, you can kind of see these two pieces or these two bodies not adhering to each other. But you might be asking, what about this piece here? Now, to further emphasize this, let me go ahead and change this to a separate color so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So what I went ahead and did is color coded each of these bodies. The one on the left is orange and the one on the right is white. Now, as you can see, as we zoom in, you can kind of see the way this pin works. So this pin is sitting in between this top piece here. This is the piece that's actually gonna hold our pin in place. And since this is printed in place, this is not going to adhere to each other because of the amount of clearance we're leaving in between these two parts. Now, you might be asking, how is our 3D printer able to print this without any issues? Now, you gotta keep in mind, this piece here that sits here kind of acts like supports. So since there isn't some sort of free floating structure or kind of just hanging over the edge here, your printer is gonna print this piece just like normal. And it might droop just a little bit, but because there is this small little gap in between here or this small little bridge that we've created here, it's not gonna adhere to our filament. So as you can see, this small piece here might not look too great or too you know, clean, but as you actually move up, it's actually gonna self-correct itself, especially since this is not much of a distance here. This is only two millimeters or the pin is actually two millimeters. So it's actually quite small, allowing it for it to bridge just a little bit without accidentally adhering to the other piece on the right-hand side. So as we kind of move up this piece here, you can kind of see this is our fully 3D printable print in place hinge. You can't go much further than this and actually creating this for toolboxes and stuff like that. But this is kind of like a beginner's guide for getting started with this sort of stuff. Keep in mind, this can get much more advanced really quickly. I'm just quickly showing you what it looks like at a much smaller scale. So that way you can implement this into much more simpler projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out and show you what the final results look like. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section down below. Additionally, if you wanna learn how to create functional and articulated designs for 3D printing, we're hosting the 14 day design challenge showing you exactly how to design your own models for 3D printing. Even if you're a complete beginner, want to spend less than 15 minutes per day to learn and want to get help and feedback whenever you get stuck and need assistance. So if you're interested in joining, I'm gonna leave a link down below. But with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.